All right, <laughs> I'm on. Um, hey everybody, it's Ark. Uh, I'm in a new place and I have a new $10 tripod, so hopefully the video will be a little more stable this time. Um, this is a bit of a follow-up to my previous X61 video. Within an hour of me uploading that, somebody asked a question about LED mods and <laughs> I answered him, even though he seems to be more qualified than me because he actually did an LED mod on another ThinkPad. But uh, yeah, I gave him the best answer I could and I thought I should make this follow-up video uh, addressing some problems I had personally uh, doing the, the swap to the high resolution SXGA plus panel in an X61. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, I think most of these points you could definitely find the solution to uh, doing a quick search or like going on ThinkPad forums or something. But I think having them in this video sort of documented all in one place will probably be beneficial. Um, first things first, where do you get the panel? Um, I bought my panel off of an AliExpress store called uh, Kevin Trade Shop. And yeah, some people might be apprehensive about buying from a Chinese eBay, uh, Chinese AliExpress seller. But honestly, these days, this panel's like 10 plus years old. This is kind of the only reliable place to get this specific panel, uh, you know, new old stock or in decent, decent condition these days. Um, probably short of going on ThinkPad forums and asking if anybody has a specific panel, which they probably do. If you go on ThinkPad's forum, um, I'm, I'm sure you could find somebody with this panel and possibly the modded cable. But yeah, uh, here it's $100 and it gets you, make sure you click with refit cable. And uh, you can see here, it has the cable in the picture. Um, $100 is pretty steep, considering you can probably find an X60 or X61 for under that price. But I think it's really worth it. it I, I don't want to use this laptop with the XGA panel at all. It It's really a, kind of a chore to. Most websites aren't made for such a low resolution these days. And um, it, this uh, AFFS wide view angle uh, screen does look way better than the old uh, just regular TFT screen. So um, yeah, that, that's about it. Like he does offer, you know, zero dead pixel and zero spot guarantee. But um, if you do get one with some something like that, I couldn't say what how you would go about like shipping it back to China and like the logistics of all that. I mean, like that's sort of like who's paying for that? Um, are you going to pay sixty dollars to ship this uh, screen back to China at your at your cost? I I don't know the the policy around that. So I understand a little apprehension when buying from AliExpress, but um. I bought two panels from him, one for the X61 right here and one for a T60P and you know they they were all both best both the best panels I could really ask for considering how old the screens are. Uh so yeah. Um and yeah, that brings me to my second point. Um the age of the screens is kind of an issue that you can't really get around. Um uh these use um fluorescent tubes to light the screen and they have definitely degraded over time. Uh, right now I'm in a, it's at the middle of the night and I'm in a room with a couple lamps on and I would say that the screen is a bit too dim for my liking. Um, once the lights go off, you know, it's perfectly fine. But, um, I think if you're in your living room in the middle of the day or have a couple lights on, uh, it definitely is like, mm, this could be a little brighter. Um, and the colors I think are a little washed out. Um, this one, this screen itself is definitely a little, little uh, warmer or a bit yellowy, but I couldn't really tell unless I was like, went back in time 15 years and had an original panel. Um, the, the T60P one I got though, definitely is like absolutely yellow. Um, there's no getting around that. So, you know, it sucks, but that's kind of what you have to deal with, with such old screens. Um, now, to, to mitigate this, people usually um, go for the LED uh, backlight modification where you remove the, the fluorescent tube that lights the, back, lights the backlight in the screen and um, swap it in with an LED strip and I think like a, a new kind of converter board or something. Um, this is kind of complicated uh, in my opinion because I'm a casual, but uh, yeah, somebody named Ziffmont um, was selling kits a few years ago, but apparently he might have disappeared or something or like, I don't know, the website's still up. So it, even if you can't buy a kit off of him, he does have the guide. So you can probably buy 
a kid off of some Chinese site or something. Um, and yeah, it's very in-depth. He does go over uh, all the caveats you might have dealing with the, uh, the fluorescent tube swap, the CCFL swap to the LED strip. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Like, I, I don't really care to do this because I've already played around with it that much and um, maybe someday down the line but it's just another kind of cost for me, and um, I don't know, it does seem pretty pretty neat. Like, looks really bright. And yeah, these other links, converting ThinkPass to LED backlighting, Chinese vendors, generic LED backlight parts, kits and mods. So yeah, there's a lot of resources. Um, driver boards, yeah, I guess you're gonna need to get some special board, maybe solder something. Who knows? Um, I'm not interested in this really, to be honest. Um, even though it's like, you will definitely, if you do this, you, you will definitely have the Cadillac of all ThinkPads, um, ThinkPad X61s. So, yeah, um, I don't know what the deal is. Everybody was like, oh, he's disappeared, but his site's still up. And on ThinkPad forums, I think he's made a couple posts the past few months, but I don't know, who knows. Uh, good luck if you want to do this backlight mod. <laughs> now, um, anyway, next step, or uh, next point was um, the BIOS, yeah, okay. So when you swap the high resolution SXGA panel into a regular X60 or X61, um, the BIOS might not like recognize the panel or something uh, being such high resolution and it might have uh, garbled video and stuff. A uh, simple solution to that is go get Middleton's BIOS uh, SXGA plus version. Um, it's, I think it's linked right here on ThinkPad Wiki and um, any, whatever you do, if you do the swap or not, you're gonna want, if you have an X61, you're gonna want Middleton's BIOS because um, of the SATA 2 and removing Wi-Fi card whitelist. Um, there's honestly no downside to doing it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> uh, last point, yeah, okay, um, the EDID. So let me go into the settings real quick, um, into display. And as you can see, this panel is at 60 hertz. Um, but for some reason, out of the factory, they uh, programmed in the EDID to have this panel run at 50 hertz, which um, if you're not a discerning person, you probably won't notice, um, but I do notice it. And considering I wanna use this laptop for playing like retro games and stuff, um, if I'm playing like a fighting game like Third Strike or something, Running that game at 50 frames a second is not going to be very pleasant. Um, a lot of old games are also tied to frame rate, so if you're running it at 50 frames a second when it should be running at 60, it's going to have some issues. So um, I really was like bummed out that this was these panels were running at 50 hertz. But uh, doing a little searching, apparently, um, so on, I found on this guy's blog, Michael Moffitt, some old posts, but they're very useful nonetheless. Um, his first one was just him documenting him doing it, but the second one actually has pictures of him doing the same thing. And so, EDIDs, it's basically the, uh, it's basically like a little file that tells the monitor, that's on the monitor, that tells the computer like what the monitor supports, what resolution and what frame rates, uh, what hertz it supports. And for some reason, like I said, out of the factory, they put it for 50 hertz. Uh, no no clue why, because this panel can definitely drive 60 hertz. Um, now you can flash a new EDID to the the panel, but it for some reason, the chip that houses the EDID is read-only. Now, the solution to this is, uh, yeah, you can see. So you open, you know, there's a little plastic film covering this, and what he's done, he, he has lifted this pin right here and uh, enabled writing to the EEPROM chip that houses the EDID. So now you can flash a modded EDID to this chip. And it's as simple as that. Uh, you might, you know, it's kind of uh, a pr pressure when you're trying to lift that pin off of such a small chip, but I was able to do it to two panels. And now both my uh, X60 panels are running at 60 Hertz. So yeah, here it is. He's modded EDID. And um, yeah, right here he provides it, provides the EDID binary, but it leads to a 404, which kind of sucks. But if you go to Wayback Machine and just enter that that link, um, it is 
like it's available right there and it just downloads straight from Wayback Machine. So yeah, I've already downloaded it a couple times, but yeah. Um, and that's about it. Like if you have any issues with this, um, I guess post a comment, but uh, everything, you know, is pretty documented with these. People have been doing this for a while. So hopefully um, your plans to swap out the panel in X60 succeed. It's not too hard. I think this extremely long video has made it seem a lot more difficult than it it should be, but sometimes you want to get it right the first time, and I didn't get it right the first time. I got it wrong the first time, and then I got it right the second time. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'll try my best to answer them, even though I'm a casual. But uh, yeah, good luck. Have fun. Bye-bye.